All right, I was actually really expecting that to be the end, but apparently we're continuing on. So I kind of broke up most of this because we are heading this way. It said to make a, put a path down here with a site token. It said if you can um, move, when you move, you can actually fall, go down. You act like it's flat. So as like if you would go from this step down here, you kind of just act like it's flat. You don't take damage or anything. So you can move down, but you can't without stairs, it said, but you can't move up without stairs. So we could fall down, we just can't get back up. Unless there's some special ability that allows us to climb up there for some reason. Man, I didn't think we would keep going. Okay, I'm surprised about that. So Varix, we had one. Okay, so we moved, then we moved one space with Bryn. So she actually has two, two movement left. So she could go one two and by doing that she's next to the site token and we can see what's ahead of us as you approach the red light glows brighter and brighter discard this site token oh my gosh it keeps going place tile 18b all right, we have built up something pretty crazy. We got a tree, we have a barricade, a chest, a cauldron, and a lectern with a book on it. And an archway behind it. Where's our archway? Look at that. Pretty cool. Her laughter Ooh. is poison, thrust into the heart of the barony. Blood sister Nacruel's mocking voice echoes through the air, each syllable twin to a darker, more ancient chorus. She speaks with the tongues of demons, and her power will only grow. Hello. A blood witch stands at the lectern, a twisted smile plastered across her face. You're too late, she cackles. Here, where the veil is thin, I have gained the knowledge I seek. Soon, Forthin and the rest of the baronies will bow before me in the blood coven. Even in my weakened state, defeating you shall be worth it. Spawn a orange blood witch, Necrawl. Oh, shit. Alright, here's Necrawl. Or at least a blood witch. I think she just... This is supposed to be a specific blood witch for this one. But there's a four of these in the in the box. So She goes right behind the lectern. Right here. A binding light flashes out of the door archway and the crawl contorts in pain the energy of her ritual has taken its toll on her she calls for reinforcements as more enemies flood the watchtower the crawl's reinforcements will arrive soon uh -oh. final objective defeat the crawl all right what do we know about her we know that she has 65 health and three defense and she has one weakness. Wow. Okay. And enemies are coming soon. Let's spin this back around a little bit. Okay. All right. Well, that's all the movement and stuff we had left with our characters. I opened this place up. Let's take a look at some of these. So these, I remember looking at these, uh, Barricades. If a hero attacks an enemy adjacent to a barricade, the hero adds one success. When an enemy attacks a hero who is adjacent to a barricade, the enemy adds one success. And we can also try to dismantle them. So we can use those for us, or they can happen against us, or we can dismantle them. Steam rises from... Acrid steam rises from within an old iron cauldron. You may interact to search the cauldron. A 
tome lies open on the lectern. The text with this some script you do not recognize, but judging by the scene before you, it must be some kind of blood magic. But you have more important things to do now than read. The chest lock is so rusted and damaged, I know he could open it, forcing it would require strength. And then we have the pillar. You can't do anything with the pillar. The tree we can search. Okay. Well, first we have to end the phase, unfortunately. Because we have no movement or anything left. No infection, no terror. We can get rid of our fatigue, which is nice. Oh boy. All right. Necrawl. Target Varix. The red mist around the Blood Witch writhes and churns. After the defense, each hero within three spaces of the Blood Witch, Necrawl scars each card with one or more fatigue on it. Then they discard one fatigue from each card. Okay, so if we have fatigued cards, we scar them. A scar is when you flip the card, you take a damage. Actually, two damage. When a scarred card flips, suffer two damage. So that's kind of, that's crappy. You don't want to get that. Or you don't want to at least get the fatigue off, the scar off before you flip it. So she only moves one, she has four range and four damage. Well, she can't hit anybody with that. She's targeting Varix up here. She's obviously too far from him. Four range, one, two, three, four, five, if she can move. And even if she gets here, for example, one, two, three, four. She still moves though. So she's gonna move up here. I believe it said that they still maneuver toward the enemies even if they can't get one. Um, that's something I'll have to double check but I'm pretty sure that's how it worked. Uh, but she's unable to attack anybody because she only has four range. So that's a good start for us even though we are pretty far from her. But we know there's going to be some people coming. A massive fireball shoots out of the shimmering red surface. It explodes with a blast powerful enough to knock you off your feet. Each hero on or adjacent to a highlighted space flips one card with a scar token on it. The highlighted spaces are here and here. We are not anywhere near those. So we're okay. Ah, shoot. Spawn the following enemies. Oh, they do go back to the map. Good thing I still have that part of the map up. So we have a bandit and a zealot. Oh boy. Alright. So bandit. So we have an orange bandit. We haven't seen them yet. Oops. I'm trying to get his uh, token in here. Good. These are the bandits. So he goes here next to the stairs. And the zealots we've seen already. And he goes here. So they're coming from behind. We really need to take her out. We probably need to take those guys out technically, right? I mean, we want to... She has 65 health. We got to go after her. No cruel reinforcements will continue to arrive until she's defeated. <laughs> Hopefully they uh, keep coming from behind. Every foe turns their gaze on Varix as the Blood Witch calls out a command. So Varix is going to get ganked this round. Alright, we got to try to get this done. This is taking longer than I expected. I didn't think there's going to be more to this board. This is an epic first mission, isn't it? All right, Varix. One, two, three is your free movement. Down to here. He can actually go one, two, three and get within range to attack her. Which I think he's going to do. Man, he has four health, though. Shoot. We'll be able to heal him, I think, with uh, Bryn. So, one, two, three. 
Now he's one space away from her, and he's got his spear out with reach. So let's go after. Let's go after her with the spear. Hopefully she's weak to Pearson. We have no idea. Price to pay during the attack: subtract one success, or each hero within three spaces of this enemy scars one card. Oh shit! Well, that's shitty. She has five defense, dude. She has five defense. Wow. Maybe we shouldn't have charged in like that. Alright, one success, one surge. We can enfeeble her. Enfeeble means she does less damage on her turn. So we can get one success with our surge. We can get two more and enfeeble. And if we take two fatigue with our survivor ability, during your attack, add one surge, which we will do to add another success. We'll do Survivor to add a success. And any hero may discard one condition. We don't have any conditions yet. But I think we really need to try to pile the damage as quickly as possible on her. So we're going to add whatever successes we can. Alright, let's see what happens. Confirm. 9 damage. Takes her down to 56. She blocked 2. Okay, so she has 5 defense. So she didn't block all five, she blocked three. So it's random between zero and five, which she'll block. So that's kind of cool. It's not always the same. So it's a little bit of iffy. She's not always going to get five. She might get a zero and that'd be a huge hit. But we got her down to 56. All right, now it is... Oh, uh, we're adjacent to that thing too. That wasn't very smart of us, was it? Shoot. We're going to get in between her with uh, Bryn. So Bryn's going to go free move, one, two, three. Then she's going to go one. We can go through our allies, two, to get here. I don't know if that's going to help much because she has a ranged attack, which she can go through us. But, but what we're going to do is we're going to use our Vigor Potion. During your turn, you or an adjacent hero either heals three or discards three fatigue. We're going to heal three. Oh, I screwed up, didn't I? On, uh, dang it, I have to see what it is on this next attack. I was supposed to either put one less success on that or scar a card or something like that. So we'll have to fix that. So one, two, up to seven. That's good. And then Bryn's going to attack, and she's going to use the sword, because that's what she's got out. We haven't found a weakness yet, so the weakness is not Pearson. Here, during the attack, subtract one success, or each hero within three spaces of this enemy scars one card. So we have to scar... She was not within three spaces at the time. Bryn wasn't, but obviously Varix was, so we have to scar Varix's card. That's the red tokens. So we'll scar, every time you flip a card with a scar, you um, take two damage. But that is a condition that we can get rid of with a surge here, so we're going to put it on the, we'll put on the spear for now. I kind of want to flip this card over to get to her healing side. His healing side. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Let's go. We got our uh, black die. Attacking with the Warden's Blade. We have Steady Defense up. Three successes. Oh, that is huge. We are going to put two fatigue on this card. 
during your attack or defense if you are adjacent to another hero, which we are. Add one success. We didn't get a surge. During your turn or just your defense, add one. Okay. So we got four successes. Weakness. Nice. Weak to slashing. 13 damage. Blocked. Three. Down to 43 hit points. Now we know what the weakness is. All right. Bryn hasn't taken any damage yet. Um, so I'm not using the Warrior's Breath. Guardian's Potion. I think we're going to be using this turn. Before you... Before your or an adjacent hero's defense, ignore the attack. We're going to be using that, I think, in this next round. Uh, okay. I got a Scar card because I didn't take one less success. I don't want to take a less success. We got to kill this lady, this uh, witch as quickly as possible. We're going to scar the uh, sword because there's no reason we're going to flip that. It's, she's weak to it. Only if we flip do we lose two damage. Unless something makes us flip our card. End phase. Infection and terror. We don't have infection or terror. We can't get rid of fatigue. Okay. The zealot way back here mend blood witch recovers two health what target varix so you can move three spaces obviously we're not gonna they're not gonna come anywhere close to us but oh she heals the blood witch for two health that's a bunch of crap <laughs> the crawl is up on varix has not lifted their gaze from varix if the target is varix increase the Attack the success of this attack by two. Oh boy. But you know what the good thing is? She is. I think she's, has, she's going to move one space. I think she will try to move away a little bit. And then, because she's still three range from him then, for the Varix. If the target is Varix, increase the attack by two. I don't know how you do that. Do we, is it, do we interrupt to do that? Or do we just do two more damage? The damage of this attack by two. So it would be six damage. Okay. The thing is that it doesn't matter. Before you or an adjacent hero's defense, ignore this attack guardian potion. So we just don't even get the attack at all. Because Varix... Because, uh... Brynn had the Guardian Potion. And he's stayed adjacent to Varix. So that's, that's huge. So, totally wasted attack. The Bandit moves up three with a range two attack. One, two, three. He has no chance to get anywhere near them right now. Something shoots out of the archway into the sky. Exploding and covering each hero in sizzling acid. That sucks. Each hero infects one card. Well, that's not... That's just crap. Each hero infects one card. So I'm in my little baggie of tokens here. The tree almost takes a dive. Infect a card. We'll infect that one and this one, I guess. Okay. Spawn the fallen enemies. Another bandit. A green bandit is coming. We actually have one sitting here, so he's he gets added in. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get to get through her before these bandits. More reinforcements will continue to arrive. Zealot screams an alien incantation form before a single name Varix. Alright, we need 
Unfortunately, we don't have... We have Crushin on the other side of the War Bell. Um, nobody really got hit by that barricade because we saved it. So that was that's big. We go take an extra damage for our side. Varix has to move. I think uh, we know that he's weak to. Yeah, we know she's weak to um, slash it, and Varix doesn't have slash it. We could. Uh, so I'm not going to waste flipping over the card. Varix is going to move one space here to the diagonal. And she is. He's two spaces away with, with the spear. We've got reach. So he's going to use two attacks on her with that spear this round. First attack. We might be scarring these cards up. I don't know. I don't want to subtract successes because we really need to kill her. Blue die. Uh, that's not the best. That's pretty bad, actually. One success and advantage. So one success. An advantage basically means take a fatigue to get another success. That's two successes. You know, we didn't have a surge, so we couldn't enfeeble her. Well, we're going to take another two fatigue. So that's three here. Add one to the spear. To gain a surge. So we can either add a success with that surge and discard a condition. So I'm thinking about maybe discarding this, but we could also use it on here. Add two successes and enfeeble the enemy. I think that might actually be better. So we're going to add two successes and enfeeble the enemy. And that is going to... And then we're going to have to scar up Varix's card. Because I'm not going to take one away we'll do it this turn we'll scar it next i don't think you can put multiple conditions on a card so next turn we'll have to unless we're able to get rid of that scar somehow we'll have to take a success away so right now we got four and then feeble confirm knocks her down to 33 health 12 damage continue and then he's attacking again with the spear all right one surge that's all we got is a surge wow that blows well so here's what we're going to do with that i think we're going to use the surge here and one success and any hero may discard a condition we're going to discard the scar and then we're going to take keep the success and get scarred again and we can put it back on this card could it do we can't have two scars on the card but because we got rid of it we'll able to place it back on there after the attack and still keep our one hit which i think it's worth just to try to damage her and we did zero damage damn it because of her defense well oh well all right so now we have bryn bryn is gonna Use her maneuver to go up, and then she gets two attacks. But she does have her sword. All right, we gotta do some do some rolls here. Three success. That's a good roll. We have a fatigue on that blade, which means we can't use her other ability. We're on defense side. We already have a fatigue on this card. 
during your on a Jason Hero's defense, okay, and we don't have a surge. So we are basically just hitting for three damage. And then we're gonna end up getting a scar, because we're not gonna get rid of that. We're not gonna get rid of the success. We're gonna stay on the defensive side of our card anyway. I don't plan on flipping it. And I don't plan on flipping the blade either. So 12 damage, nice. One attack left this round. Warden's Blade. One success, one surge. One success. Add one success, and adjacent hero may discard one fatigue for the surge. So Varix will discard a fatigue off of her weapon, his weapon. Oh boy. And because we can't get scarred again, we have to subtract a success from this attack. Or each year within three spaces it scars a card. We don't have any cards available to scar. So. Alright, four damage. All right, so I'm starting again. Uh, actually, that last attack uh, was the last video of the other night. This is a couple days later, and I'm trying to finish off this first quest. Um, so anyway, we just ended up with the heroes attacking at Necrawl. Trying to get back on what happened here. Necrawl has 17 hit points left. And she is enfeebled, which means she does less damage. We have all these other enemies charging in from the back. Trying to get to us as we're fighting her off. I really want to get that chest open too before I kill her, but I don't know. We could also mess with this uh, cauldron, I think. But I'm kind of busy just trying to kill her. That might, you might be able to do something with that but on her, but who knows. I'm trying to get take care of her before she wipes us out. Good news for recording is I actually ordered a little tripod for my iPhone, so that might help a lot with quality of me not having to hold the uh, the iPhone all the time, where I could set it up on the board. Uh, and I might not be able to go back and forth to the app as much if I do it that way. You might just read off the app while you see the board. I don't have to decide how to do that when the time comes, but that should help with a lot of the me just kind of drifting off with this thing, you know. It's not easy to play basically one-handed all the time, but I do the best I can. So hopefully you guys are, it's okay. At least it's somewhat enjoyable to check out this game. So anyway, let's move on. So we're on the end phase section. So let's end our phase. Darkness phase. Infection and terror. So we are infected. We have infections on our heroes. One infection on Bryn puts her down to nine hit points. And an infection on Varix also puts him down to six. We need to get rid of this scar. Maybe if he does a move, if he's able to get a surge on his next attack, we can remove this scar condition, flip this card over to get rid of this, get on that healing side. I think that's a plan. I want to try to get to it this next round. We can each discard fatigue, so we'll get the fatigue off of this blade. Fatigue off of Varix. All right, let's continue. Uh -oh. Alright, so Bryn's getting targeted. Bryn, that's good for us. She has 9 hit points. The red mist around the Blood Witch, Necrawl, rides and churns. After the defense, each hero within 3 spaces of the Blood Witch scars each card with 1 or more fatigue on it. Then they discard 1 fatigue from each card. Now, I'm not sure. I don't know if you could scar... 
I'll have to check. I don't know if you get double condition a card. Um, if you have multiple scars on a card, so when you flip it, you take multiple damage. Like, multi like you say you have two scars, you take four damage. And that's possible. But I thought I read that you can't have more than one condition on each card. And that and scarring is a condition. It's a status, right? Actually, it's not. No, it's a condition, yeah. I have to check. I have to look that into that. Because right now, all the cards are scarred. So, all right. So she's going after Bryn. One range, one movement. Four range. So I guess she will try to move away from her. Four damage. She can move here to get. I mean, she doesn't have to move. But I believe they try to move to the to the maximum distance. And she is getting a little distance away from Varix if she moves. So I think that makes sense. She can still attack him from here. This luck turn isn't in the way. So I think that would be what she would try to kind of get a little distance away from Varix. So four damage. All right, Bryn gets a black die for defense. And that's it. Just 10 health. We do have our strong steady defense. During your or adjacent hero's defense, add one um, success for two fatigue. All right, what do we get? We got two successes. So that's two hits on us. Yeah, and then we're going to spend two fatigue to get us down to three uh, successes. So we're going to take one damage. Which in the end is not too bad. Up just to eight hit points. Then they discover fatigue from each card. So that also comes into play here. So we have to look this up after this turn, after everybody else goes. Hopefully I don't mess it up. If I forget to check it out, then I apologize. Let's see. We're going to check out the conditions, and if you can have more than one condition per card. Oh, we actually have a move here, so we can look it up now. Let's look up the glossary. And conditions. All right. A condition affects a hero either positively or negatively and is represented by a token that's placed on a card. When a hero gains a condition, they take a condition token of the appropriate type from the supply and place it on a card in their play area. Many effects specify the card where the hero must place the condition. If a card is not specified, the hero can place the token on their hero card, attack card, or any other skill cards, which we don't have yet. When a condition token will be placed on a card that already has a token of that type, the card cannot gain that condition. If a hero can place a condition token, they must do so. The charge keyword is an exception to this rule, allowing a hero to place multiple condition tokens of the same type on the card when the effect of the keyword is resolved. When a hero flips the card, so you can't do more than, than have one, except for the charge keyword. So I guess you could charge up an attack maybe or something like that? I don't know. We haven't run into that yet. So we cannot add another condition. So once it's scarred, it's, al it's already scarred. So it said, add a token on the cards. And then it said, remove one fatigue from any one that is scarred. So this is then, so that's a separate thing, right? Add the thing, and then remove a fatigue from anything that is scarred. So we'll do that. I believe that's correct. All right, Varric's test will seven. She's doing an incantation against him. A one blue die for each, add one blue die for each adjacent hero. We do have an adjacent hero there. And Varric's will is plus two. So we have two blacks. We need seven. We need five successes. We got. We already got five. We need to add a blue die too. So we actually have six. 
plus the two is eight, so we pass. All right, Zealot. Target and Varix. The Zealot's way in the back. It's moving three. One, two, three. It's not even close to Varix within three range yet. All these guys are way back here charging up. Orange Bandit. Two range, three moves on Bryn. One, two, three. Still too far away. And then... Green, green, uh, one, three, maneuver, one, two, three. A massive fireball shoots out of the shimmering red surface. It explodes with a blast powerful enough to knock you off your feet. Each hero on or adjacent to a highlighted space flips one card with a scar token on it. Ooh. Alright, so the spaces are there and there. Okay. So here, was an open eye adjacent to it, and here, I, I put this tree down just to, but it's rusted here, not adjacent to it, so we're good there. We're getting lucky in this fight, I'll tell you that. The zealot slams their staff into the ground and drones a dark prayer. Hero phase, nice, we got through that with only a little bit of damage. I really want to try to open that chest. I don't know if this is going to be once we kill her, the mission's over, and we don't get what's in that chest, you know? I'm kind of getting cocky about wanting to open that chest right now, but I kind of want to open that chest. Oh, shoot. That means our best character to fight her would back off and open a chest and that's not really only really 17 health left we already know her weakness is slashing and Bryn's the only one who has slashing you know what let's start with Bryn and do some damage on her we'll see where we're at and if she's close to dying, we might have Varix try to open the chest with a couple actions. If he has minus one in strength, but with a couple, with a couple, he might still be able to pop it open. I don't know. Let's start having Bryn with the attack, though. All right. So Bryn is going. She's still adjacent to her. She's going to go for the attack on the crawl with the Warden's Blade. We're going to have to subtract a success because we can't scar the card. Um, that just kind of sucks. Yeah, if we go if we go with Varix first, we might be able to actually have Varix cure the scar off of If Varix goes first and attacks then with if Varix gets a surge, he can cure the scar off of Bryn. So when Bryn attacks, Bryn doesn't have to scar well, that's not quite true because anybody who attacks might have to scar a card. All right, well, let's just go. Let's just go. I'm thinking too much. All right, so we're going to have to subtract a success from this is the point. Or, or during the attack, subtract a success or each hero within three spaces scars one card. But since everybody's got scars, I guess we can't choose that option. I'm assuming so we're going to have to subtract a success. Let's get a good roll. I don't have to worry about it. Look at that roll. Way underneath 
the table, it's a double, it's a four, yeah. Two successes, so that's one success. We're gonna spend two fatigue on our warrior's blade, warden's blade, to, and we're adjacent to another hero to add another success. And then we're gonna put two fatigue on our card. For each of these advantages to add two more successes. That gives us four total success. Alright, so that's pretty good. We actually would have had five, but we had to get rid of one. So that's a big hit because you know these are. She's weak to this. Come on. 16 damage, she's down to one hit point. Dang! All right, now we're gonna get stupid. We're gonna get stupid here. I'm gonna move Bryn back one space. <laughs> this is where the greed comes in. We can only move one space because we're starting adjacent to her, so we're impeded. And we're gonna try to open that chest. All right, so Bryn on the chest, test the might. That's five successes, plus her two is seven. Oh, we're no closer to getting the chest open. Oh, you gotta be kidding. Alright. Alright, well, Varix is gonna try to open... Oh, this is just a bad idea all around, but we're still gonna do it. Alright, so Brynn's done. She attacked. She moved, her imp the impedance only allowed her to move one space, and then she did an action on the chest. So Varix is going to do an action to try to pop this chest open. Tested Might with a minus one. So that is one, two, three, four, five, four successes. So we should definitely get this open, I think, with now. If we need it, Boom. Take it. The following has been added to your inventory to be used later. 14 herbs and 1 animos from some blue leaf coverings. 19 cloth from a bone laurel. Rider's wrap recipe. Nice. Alright, now she has her free movement. She's going to go 1 to here. And with her, ray, with her spear, she could attack from 2 spaces away. We only need to do 1 damage. Of course, she didn't do one damage earlier. So, it's not a given that she's going to hit and do a damage here. We got greedy. Come on, Barry. Good roll. One success. Uh-oh. And a... Oh, no. An advantage. We got greedy. We have to subtract a success from that. What else do we got here? During your attack, add one surge for two fatigue. We could do that. We have it open. Two fatigue. This is going to be. This is what's going to bring us over the edge. Two fatigue. We're going to get a surge. And we're going to spend that surge to add two more successes and enfeeble. We already got one success taken away. Two more successes and enfeeble the enemy. I don't know if I spent the first fatigue on this. But no, I can't remember. So I'm just going to put an extra fatigue on the card anyway, just to spend an extra one. So we have three successes total. We have to subtract one. Confirm. This is the Done. You chose. Seven damage. Negral is down. As you toss your final blow at her, she staggers backwards, exhausted. You haven't seen the last of me, Negral snarls. She drags her dagger across her palm and, with a twisted smile, vanishes before your eyes. From the archway, there is a rumble as the shimmering red surface crashes to the ground, sending a wave of blood over you. Ugh. 
The heroes win. Nice. I knew it would be killed. I had a feeling when we killed him, it was just going to end. And we wouldn't get that chest. And I wanted to get that chest because I'm a greedy son of a bitch. Victory. Victory. Now count the cost. Oh, nice. Shouts of alarm. Become cries of happiness throughout the forest. As members of the caravan find their missing friends and family. Everyone alive? Unhurt? We'll live. What was that? Uthak magic. Looks like a weak, looked like a weak sort of portal. She was talking to a demon. But it could have come through from the yen, ooh, infernal to here. It was weak. Does that mean she was a weak sorcerer? Is she defeated? No, things are only going to get worse from here. That woman was a blood sister, the highest rank of Uthok witch. She would try again, bigger. This was only her opening move. It was a weak portal, but I think she did exactly what she set out to do. If she wants to open a full portal to let in that demon into the real world, I think we have to assume she can. She can. You're not just going to let it happen, though, are you? No, we're not. Come back to Frostgate with me. My mother's house, my house, has plenty of room. We'll figure out our next steps. Wonderful. I'm sure we'll all become fast friends. We'll see. All right, we did it. Three hours and 42 minutes. It takes a lot longer while you're recording, especially if you have to hold the camera the whole time with one hand. And, oh, man. So hopefully I can speed this up if I continue doing these videos, if people enjoy it. A night's watch main quest. A lot of items obtained. Looks like we got some gold. We got a whole bunch of... I know it seems like we got a whole bunch of crafting materials and stuff. And we got some recipes as well. Continue. We'll probably go to town now and do a whole town thing. Here we go. After completing each quest, the heroes automatically travel back to the city of Frostgate. Traveling costs nothing, but the heroes will frequently encounter other characters and events along the way that will help or harm your cause. So they have in-game like events that are the app takes care of. The cemetery by the side of the road has been disturbed. Each grave and tomb broken open from the inside. Tracks lead away from the road toward the west, but there's no time to follow them. Wow, alright, so on this way here, this, I guess we're traveling this way. That's where this happened. So we have some creatures leaving the cemetery. And we head into the town of Frostgate. Kind of follow the dots. Oh, nice. I like the way this app is. It's really cool. Brynleacher follows through her fellows through the streets of Frostgate. The short stone roundhouses mark important clan holdings. White, wild, man, I can't read. Wild timber longhouses, taverns, and workshops line the streets. Brynleacher's house is large, its wings unfolded around a scraggly little garden. The bare timber of the frame over the door is carved with the fanciful clan folk designs. You live here. It's nice. It belonged to my mother. She was an adventurer. She had some money. Ronin, who's that? She's well respected by the clans. Kin to the Thane. A blonde man with a clan folk kilt and a warm smile stands in the doorway. Welcome home, child. Uncle Ronin. Ronin, these are my companions. Everyone, this is Ronin, a clan mediator and kin to my mother. Hmm. Greetings to you, Ronin of the Wild. I have heard of you. Ronin of the Wild, eh? I haven't gone by that name in years. Come inside, everyone. The group enters the house and divests themselves of the traveling gear. Soon, all are gathered in the house's long common room. Uncle Ronin, we found a watchtower that had been overrun by the Uthak. We need to send a message to Baroness Adeline. And here's the Baroness. No need for that. You could tell me in person. Aunt Adeline, why aren't you in Highmount? Ah, this is some sort of family reunion? Aunt Adeline, Bryn, I had no idea you were nobility. 
Introductions are made all around. The Baroness is polite if reserved. Charmed to meet you, all of you. For as why I'm not in Highmount, things are not going well, Bryn. The Uthok threaten us across the barony. Bandits and criminals are worse than ever. I've even got word that the undead are stirring in the Mistlands. Refugees have been pouring into Frostgate. We're the only city in the north large enough to accept them. The Baroness has been negotiating with the clan elders to make sure for Forthin's people aren't turned away at the gates. Shouldn't the Baroness be taking the battle to the Uthak and protecting her people? What a good question. Shouldn't she? She should. She will. Beginning now. There's a thing there. Bryn, I'd like to ask you and your friends for help. We're not her friends. Help with what? Apparently, you've already seen that the Uthak are at large in my barony. My soldiers cannot even defend every watchtower, let alone every town and village. And when new threats or new opportunities appear, I have no assets to spare. In short, I need adventurers. You six are just what I'm looking for. We six. These are Kelly, Deepfire, and Chance. The dwarf has a certain swag to her. She enters the room, smiling and nodding. The hiring scatfolk lurks in their shadow, ears flat against his head and tail lashing. Pleased to meet ya. I hear your mug can help you with a little problem. Mistress Deepfire is a skilled artisan. Some of her guildmates have been forced to take shelter not far away, evading Uthak war parties. I need a few brave souls to come and help lead them to safety. I'm sure the Forge Smith's Guild will reward our bravery. And I believe I mentioned the brigands who had been stealing supplies meant for the refugees? That's me, I guess. I mean, I'm not I'm not a brigand, but I know where to find them. Maybe get the supplies back. I'm happy to help them, my lady, but how? With the soldiers, with resources. I can't just fix your mess with good intentions. You six. You're a quick thinker, aren't you, Baroness Adeline? Oh, my arm is killing me. <laughs> At times, your company now includes trained warriors, at least one skilled wizard, and a dragon hybrid who, unless I miss my guess, has more experience and wisdom than everyone else in the room put together. I will agree to this, so long as we understand that finding the Uthak is our most important objective. You may have cause to regret that proclamation. There are other enemies as evil as the Uthak and far more powerful. But fine, but I have a condition. We operate out of this house, not Highmount. If we allow Kelly and Chance to join us, if then none of them answer to you. We are a company of equals, not soldiers in your army. I wouldn't have it any other way. I'll leave you to it. The Baroness and Ronin depart, leaving the four companions alone. Even the dwarf and the hirings have excused themselves. This is very exciting. What should we do first? Two quests are now available. Each quest unlocks a new hero for your party. Read the follow- We- the Read- the quest briefings for more details. All right, welcome to the city of Frostgate. The city is home to the heroes during the campaign. Here they can prepare by visiting the armory, craft hall, and shop. Read the campaign rules section starting on page 26 of Learn to Play Now to learn more about the city, world map, and other new systems. We are not going to do this in this video. After the heroes have completed their time in the city, Select the map button in the bottom right corner to return to the world map and select the next destination. We gain the following cards. Rallying Cry, Battle Cry, Bryn, Shared Pain, Shared Energy, Cyrus, Prowess, Flow, Galadin, Destiny's Call, Fate's Embrace, Varix. Okay. Assuming we can always look at this stuff in this party menu here. You have gained 1 XP. Heroes may now each use skills with a total amount of XP cost equal to your current XP. Kelly and Chance both start with 1 skill. Gain the following cards. I got this, a word of caution. Kelly, disguise careful, Chance. Right, and now we're able to go around and look at the smithy here. Different things, maybe a shop, 
you know, we're going to explore this on its own video. So we are done with the first mission. We get to the town. We get some cards. We get some skill points. We got some loot, and we have things to do. And I said we'll continue with that as uh, in the next video. We'll do maybe a town video, and then we'll continue with the next quest. Looks like we have some side quests and options to do. So there we go. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. This was a very long first mission, surprisingly long. It just kept building and building. And you know, once we got here, I thought we were going to be done, and then it added more down, and then there's the whole boss fight, which this didn't seem like a boss fight, so I, figured, I, I should have assumed there would be more, but I don't know. It just seemed like there was a lot of stuff going on in this first mission. It was really good. Very fun. I really enjoy so far this game. There's a lot of criticism of this game before anybody ever played it, which I just know, I never understand that. Um, the amount of hatred that people will have for something they have, they have no idea what it is. I mean, I guess people can say, I don't want app games. Fine. Um, I like the way Descent used to be. Why are you changing it? Well, then play the old Descent. I don't know what to say. You know, so I, I have second edition Descent. I can play it whenever I want. Um, but, I mean, I can understand why people might not like something, but... You know, the app is really good. This app is really neat. The way it works, I think, is is pretty. It's very um, just very well done. That's the only way to put it. Um, I like the, the combat system in this is really good so far. Um, we only played with two characters, um, really, um, and there's a lot more to learn. We haven't even dug into the skill cards or items or crafting or all the other stuff they have. So I'm excited to continue on and see what this game has in store for in store for us. So thanks for watching, everybody who did. I appreciate it. As I said, I ordered a tripod for this phone it's to record, help me record a steadier, hands-free, more recording. Hopefully that'll speed things up in the future. I may not be able to kind of do a lot of the zooming in and around with that. I mean, I'll grab it and move it around at times for sure. But I might try to just get a nice steady... You know, view to, of the board that we're at at the moment and just kind of talk through what the app is saying i'll see how i want to do it when the time comes but hopefully that might improve the length of the videos as well as some of the way the kid you know i'm moving the camera around it's not easy to do with one hand play a whole board game with one hand especially when with so many bits and pieces um but anyway thanks for watching as i said and we'll see you guys in the next one take care